grace and peace to you all my beloved this is pastor pimpon here this is the day the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it my beloved today is the 21st day of the eighth month of the year 2021 the eighth month being august you are alive there i'm alive here that testifies of god's loving kindness mercy grace name it that is the goodness of the lord he has been so good to you and i having given us life in spite of our love for him in spite of our true answers most of us if not all okay god has been so good to us my beloved the temperature here 76 degrees fahrenheit or 24.4 degrees celsius i don't know what the temperature is wherever you are but whatever the temperature is i believe god has given you a good one it's what you need okay for your sustenance it's what you need for today's enjoyment so be glad exceeding glad and thank god for it my beloved i want to bring you uh i just received a call from one of my faithful uh, servants of the Lord who was part of the ministry is who is a part the founding part of the founding uh, uh, members here in Greensboro before he moved to California and he told me he called to check on me and my wife and then he broke the news to me that some a scammer somebody using my name is saying that my wife is in Ghana is hospitalized and that I was in financial and uh, in, in dire need of money and so they should send three hundred dollars or three hundred what uh, three hundred dollars. My beloved Pastor Pimpo will not do that. So I want you if you have received any WhatsApp message or whatever means say claiming that I am looking for money because my family is in distress in dire need of financial help, my beloved, it's not Pastor Pimpo. If I need something I'll call you. I will call you. You'll hear my voice. Okay? If I ever need something, if I ever were in a financial strait and I did it, I'll call you. I'll not put it on WhatsApp. Okay? Or any other this thing. Okay? You, you hear it from me personally. So please don't honor any request from anybody sending messages saying that I, Pastor Pimpong, you know, and the person is using uh, the name just Pussel. Uh, just Pussel being the name of my church, of, all, of the church. No, no, just Pussel. If even a person should use the name, the actual name, all nations of Angelica Church, please don't honor it. Give me a call if you have my number. But don't honor it. If I need something, I'll call you. I will call you. Okay? This Pastor Pimple, just to put a disclaimer on it, that I have not authorized anybody to solicit funds on my behalf, nor have I personally sent a WhatsApp message soliciting fund because we were in, in dire need of financial help. No, I haven't. Okay, so please, yeah, if any request of that sort can, comes to you, don't honor it. This is Pastor Pimpon here, and this is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Beloved, there's a message the Lord will have me to share with all of us. The book of Luke chapter 5. Yesterday we came from Luke chapter 4. Today Luke chapter 5. Very interesting story and a true story that occurred and a powerful message it conveys to you and I. If only we we'll heed, we we'll heed the, excuse me, we we'll heed the message that is being communicated to us. In this book Jesus Christ has just come out I mean remember in the book of Loki went to the house of uh, Simon prayed for Simon's uh, mother-in-law who was sick of fever and on and on but in chapter 5 Jesus Christ you know he has passed uh, he has gone to sit by the side of a stream or a river the lake Gennesaret I was in Israel in 2005 and went to see Lake Gennesaret, you know, 
Lake Kenisaret, he was just said uh, there they call it Kenisaret, started with K, but in, the, but in King James it says Kenisaret, started with K. You know, and it came to pass that as the people pressed, you know, the people pressed upon him by that lake, he pressed upon Jesus Christ, they pressed upon him to hear the word of God. And I'll be just highlighting certain important things so that you, you and I can pay attention to. They pressed. Did you hear the word press? It means that everybody was pushing. They just want to hear the word of God. They pressed. Beloved, how much pressing are you doing to seek to hear God's word? Now by that I mean whenever you are up, whenever in the daytime, how much time do you spend to study the Word of God, to read God's Word, to hear God's Word? Oh, Pastor Pimba, but you know, I, I turn on the radio, I have my CD, cassette, that I listen to, thank God for all of that. Those are supposed to be complementary, you know, to complement the others, or to su supplement, actually. It's a su to supplement what you are doing as far as personally delving into God's Word. How much pressing? Do you and I make on a daily basis? Of course, there's some of us. Sunday are the only time or the time when we have to go to church is when we carry the Bible. Once we come, we throw it away. But these people were pressing Jesus Christ so much so that Jesus Christ had to find a way not to move away a little from them. So he says he looked and he saw two sheep and they were empty. The people, the owners, had gone to wash their nets. So Jesus Christ got into one, and the one that he got into was the one that belonged to Simon, who later on we know will become Peter, because Jesus Christ changed his name. He gave him a new surname, and his surname was being Peter. Peter means that the rock, so it's Simon the rock. <laughs> Jesus got into that boat, and when he got into it, he asked Peter, Simon to move a little further so that at least there'll be a lot of, uh, enough space between him and the crowd who were pressing to hear the word of God. Oh my God, I pray that this, um, in this day and time, we will press, we will press, we will press, press to be in, get into the presence of the Lord, press to get into his presence to hear his word, to know his word, his true word, not those compromised messages of prosperity, money, money, money. No, 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 no. I'm talking about where that, that one that will cause you to love, fear, reverence God. Press. You know, so Jesus Christ, who created, the God who created, the God man, Jesus Christ, God incarnate, who created the whole world. Jesus Christ, the word of God that was present with God, the word of God that God, when God spoke, created did create things. He had to borrow somebody's boat and they called the ship. You know, I saw the boat, you know, they have it in a kind of a museum somewhere there, you know. So he pressed and he borrowed, Jesus borrowed the boat of Peter. He borrowed the ship of Peter and used it to preach his word. Can you imagine what Peter will be? Simon or I will be. I say, ah, no, you, you took my boat. How can I fish? But not Peter. Peter was willing to push a little further. Allow Jesus Christ to use his boat. Your body is the temple of the Lord. Your body is the sheep of God. How much time have you given unto the Lord, allowed the Lord, or how many days or how long have you allowed the Lord to use the boat or your ship? That is your body. Peter allowed the Lord to use his boat. What is it that you have allowed the Lord to use that belongs, that you claim belongs to you? It's another thing that you have, you and I have to look at, you know, that you and I have to look at. Peter allowed the Lord and after the Lord had used the boat, after finish, he finished preaching, he turned around and told Peter, Peter, and I love that part, is a launch out into the deep. After Peter had allowed the Lord to use the boat, the ship, without complaining, 
He said, Jesus told Peter, Peter, launch into the deep. Launch into what? The deep and let down your nets for a drought. Launch into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. <laughs> Peter said, Lord, <laughs> we have been toiling all night to no avail. However, at your word, I will do so. At your word. Peter com didn't complain. Peter just said we've taught, but at your word. At whose word? Jesus' word. First, Jesus has borrowed his state. I don't know how many <laughs> hours Jesus used his boat to preach. How long? How long? Uh, here in America, time is money. I believe it's the same everywhere, but there are some areas. I am from Ghana, I know. <laughs> I am from Ghana, and I'm most of in Africa, time, you know, when you say come at 10 o'clock, <laughs> we will be coming around at, at, at our own time. And then the time that we have to use to work, we use the time, we are going to prayer, we are going to this and that and that and that and that, and still want to be paid. No, here time is money. You have to make sure that every hour, every second counts. And so you can see Peter. I can see him if he were me scratching my head. Oh, wow. How, how soon will he finish so that I can take my boat and go and fish? Because the whole night I didn't get blah, blah, blah. No, but Peter didn't do that. Peter allowed him. And then after he had finished, he said, launch into the deep. Hey, my friend, launch into the deep again. When all night we've been toiling, we've even launched into that deep already and we didn't get anything. Jesus said, but he said, Jesus Christ, at your word, at your word, at your word, at your word, I will do. So Jesus Christ, a Paul, a Peter launched into the deep and behold, what did he find? A great haul of fish, great haul. So much so that he said, the net started tearing breaking the thing was so heavy that it was breaking the neck the net so peter had to call his other fellows james and john they were co uh, uh, co-workers you know they were partners in business fishermen so they brought their boat also the ship and they filled two ships we fish so much, so many fish, so many, that they said both ships started sinking. My beloved, don't you love the story? Mine. When Jesus Christ, when you and I in obedience allow him to work in and through us, the blessings that he bestows upon us, we cannot contain. It takes me back to the book of Malachi, where it says, bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse and try me and see if I will, open, I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour your blessings that you cannot contain. Some don't believe. I believe in that because I have been a recipient of the blessings of God. It talks about giving. And it shall give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, shaking down, pressed down, running over, shall it be poured into your bosom. Jesus said it in the New Testament. Peter offered his boat to the Lord. He allowed him to use it, to preach his word. And as a reciprocal, in, 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 in a matter of, or in an act of reciprocity, Jesus Christ turns around and tells Peter, launch into the deep and lower your net into the deep, into the water for a, a great haul, for a great haul, for a drought. Wow. And indeed, they had bountiful sheep, fish, plenty, plenty. My beloved, there is nothing that you 
will give to God that we will not get bountiful return. No, I'm not talking about making that as the object of your giving that I'm going to give so I can get blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. You are giving because you love the Lord and you surrender your all to him. When you surrender all to him and love him above all and say, Lord, take it. It's yours. Use it. Without seeking anything in return, the Lord turns to you and says, launch into the deep and lower your net for a great haul. It is my prayer today, my beloved, that you and I will launch into the deep. We will yield our all to the Lord. Not give him half, a part, a pittance. No, surrender all to him. And when you and I do that, you hear him tell you, launch into the deep. Lower your net for a great drought. May it be so towards you today. Whatever you have surrendered to God, your all that you have surrendered to him, your all that you have yielded to him, may the Lord God through Jesus Christ grant you a bumper harvest, a bumper return, a great harvest. Be it your business that you have given, unto the, uh, given up to be used for the glory of God, be it your children, wherever that you have surrendered wholly to God, May the Lord grant you bountiful in return. The Lord is well able to do that. You know the story of Samuel? His mother, Hannah, his mother, gave him to the Lord. Gave him to the Lord. And you saw what God did for that Fana, that family, Elkanah and Hannah. How the Lord blessed that family. May the Lord do so for you as you surrender, as you yield and you give all to him. May the Lord cause you to be bountifully blessed. This is Pastor Pimpon saying grace and peace to you on this early morning walk with Jesus Christ. Father, in Jesus Christ's name, I pray that as your son and daughter who is watching today surrender their all to you and give them give you their all may you cause them to bountifully prosper spiritually and physically in jesus christ's name amen grace and peace